Nazi Party leader Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933, and with his power came a period of persecution of non-Aryan people, including Jews, Gypsies, and homosexuals. But as Primo Levi, a Jewish writer and survivor of the Auschwitz concentration camp said, monsters exist, but more dangerous are the common men, ready to believe and to act without asking questions. The White Rose, a student-led resistance group, was one of the first willing to take a stand against the Nazi government. And even though their nonviolent leadership was ended by the Nazi government, on February 22, 1943, they had already left legacies of courage and equality that were felt across Germany and around the world. Sophie and Hans Scholl were born to Robert Scholett, the mayor of Fortenberg, in 1918 and 1921, making them 21 and 24 years old when they started the White Rose. Their father was a major influence on their attitudes toward Hitler, telling them that he was an unjust leader. They were also influenced by the German youth movement, which promoted independent thinking among students and taught them to be politically active. In particular, the Jungenschaft, of which Hans Scholl was a member, opposed the Nazi campaign. In late 1941, Sophie Scholl attended a sermon by August Graf von Galen, the Roman Catholic Bishop of Münster, who criticized the Third Reich and called upon the German people to realize the true intentions of the Nazis. He explained, Isn't it true that every honest German is ashamed of his government these days? Who among us has any conception of the shame that will befall us and our children when one day the veil has fallen from our eyes and the most horrible of crimes reach the light of day? Although Sophie and her family were Lutheran, she believed in the ideals of the sermon and courageously reprinted and distributed it in a leaflet prior to the White Rose's organization. This inspired her brother to take further leadership and find justice in his broken nation. A year earlier, Hans Scholl met Alexander Schmarell, another opponent of Nazism, while studying medicine at the University of Munich. In June of 1942, the duo took part in a mandated trip to the Russian war front, where they worked as medics on the field. They were horrified by the atrocities they saw committed by the German soldiers against the opposing forces and innocent Jews. Being witness to the violence further convinced the two of Hitler's cruelty. Upon Hans's return to the university in autumn, he and his sister Sophie decided it was time to take action against the Nazi rule. Together, the leaders convinced others, including Alexander Schmorell, Christoph Profst, and their professor Kurt Huber, to join them in their nonviolent campaign protesting against Hitler's oppression of the German people. They called themselves the White Rose to represent their purity and innocence in the face of evil, since their strictly passive resistance marked them different from other groups. The inspiration for their group's name came from two texts, a 1929 German novel by B. Traven named The White Rose and a 19th century poem by Clemens Brentano named The Rose is Blooming. The former novel was banned by the Nazis, so by alluding to it, the White Rose was additionally protesting against restrictive government. Furthermore, the Clemens poem, when read in translation, states that the author wanted sweet desire of no harm, just as the White Rose intended to make change without violence. Unlike other anti-Nazi groups, such as the Edelweiss Pirates, the White Rose was strictly non-violent. In their leaflet, Passive Resistance to National Socialism, the group explained their vision, saying, We want to try to show that everyone is in a position to contribute to the overthrow of the system, and it can be done only by the cooperation of many convinced, energetic people. They spread their ideas through the use of leaflets and graffiti. In their leaflets, they use quotes from a variety of holy and philosophical texts, such as the Bible, Novelis, and Plato, in order to appeal to the moral sensibilities of other Germans who were not taking a stand. These leaflets were distributed to 16 different cities through mailing and placed in common areas such as main halls of universities. They wanted to tell other Germans, their own countrymen, that there were other kinds of Germans like themselves who were not Nazis and to wake them up. 
Their actions inspired the persecuted Jews to stay strong, as reflected upon by a former concentration camp inmate who said, When we heard about what was happening in Munich, we embraced each other and applauded. There were, after all, still human beings in Germany. On February 18, 1943, while distributing the sixth leaflet, Sophie and Hans Scholl were caught by the school custodian, Jacob Schmidt, who immediately reported them to the Gestapo. They pushed those leaflets over the balustrade so that they came floating down over the heads of students, astonished, milling about in the change of class. That's really what brings them and brought them to the attention of the Nazis, got them caught, and it's really what has led them to step into history, not only in Germany as considered among m many the greatest Germans of all time, but icons today everywhere in the fight for freedom. A draft for the seventh leaflet was found with Hans, which incriminated Christoph Probst and led to his arrest. Four days later, the Probst and the Scholz were convicted of treason and sentenced to death. But even the promise of death would not silence their protests. Sophie Scholl's last words were, It is such a splendid sunny day and I have to go. But how many have to die on the battlefield in these days? How many young, promising lives? What does my death matter if by our acts thousands are warned and alerted? Hans shouted, Long live freedom, just before his execution. The determined leader's willingness to die for their cause showed their unyielding courage in bringing about social reform and opened people's minds to a possibility of revolution. The influence of the White Rose did not end with their deaths. Their sixth leaflet was smuggled to the Allied forces, who then disseminated the leaflet across Germany. The White Rose demonstrated that the Third Reich no longer had complete control and that there were people who were going to stand up against Nazi rule even when facing the possibility of death. Although many people were still too afraid to protest, as historian Judd Newborn said, you really can't measure the effect of this kind of resistance on whether or not X number of bridges were blown up or a regime fell. The White Rose really has more of a symbolic value, but that's a very important value. As the first nonviolent group that was willing to take action in support of ethical rights and political freedoms against the oppressive rule of Hitler, the White Rose became a symbol of rebellion and courage to the German people. Even in later years, the White Rose continued to serve as a model, influencing various student protests and groups worldwide. One example is the UK-based genocide prevention network Aegis Students White Rose Society. The Aegis Trust follows the legacies of morality and righteousness left by the White Rose by spreading their beliefs through media works, campaigns, and humanitarian support for victims. By telling the story of the White Rose, the group has inspired many individuals to protest injustice and work towards peace. I tried to draw a model from Sophie Shaw and relate it to the rescuers' actions in Rwanda so that when you combine those positive values, students and young people really understand that they have to be resistant to the violence on the other stage. After hearing about the motivations of the White Rose, a student whose family had been killed in the Rwanda genocide of 1994 spoke to the Aegis Trust. He had a lot of revenge and a lot of hatred, and he said at the end of the day, he said, thank you for saving my life and saving the lives of the people that I was going to kill, because until today that was my only plan in life. I was going to leave school, join the army, get a gun, go back and kill everyone that murdered my family. Um, whereas today I see that that's not a good plan. Furthermore, the members of the White Rose are used as examples of ideal German citizens in German schools. After World War II, the new Soviet military administration of Germany ran the use of textbooks from the Weimar and Nazi eras and wrote new ones in order to re-educate the German people against Nazi ideals and learn about nonviolent resistance of the White Rose. In 2003, German youth voted Hans and Sophie Scholl as the most influential Germans of all time. Due to their public appeal, many memorials and tributes to the White Rose were made in Germany, including a postage stamp with Hans and Sophie Scholl, street names with the names of the White Rose members, and various monuments. The real legacy of the White Rose is for today. It's for students and adults of all backgrounds everywhere to 
Use them as role models in the need to not just talk the talk, but to walk the walk. As the first student leaders of anti-Nazi resistance, the members of the White Rose redefined courage in the face of adversity and left an impact that continued to inspire student protests throughout history.